Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my Programming with Python 2.5 through 2.7 tutorial. Today, I'm going to talk about a really cool module available, totally built into Python, called SQL Lite. And again, this is how you bring in new modules, and don't forget to leave the three on there. And this is built into Python, so you do not need to build this yourself. And what this allows you to do, this module, it allows you to create pretty much something that looks and works identically to a data database without the need for a database server. Now if you want to use this tool, of course you want to, even though I'm going to have some functions inside of this, I'm going to create the database itself right here as a global variable so I can use it for all my different objects. And you just want to start it off with sqlite3.connect. Now I hope this makes sense. Let's just say, if I was going to create a new database file, I normally, almost always, would create one like this, sample dot and then end with db for database. But in this tutorial, so I can call multiple times to create a table that already would exist, which is going to trigger an error, I'm going to instead save this database in memory. And this is how you do that. Remember, you normally wouldn't do this. I'm doing it because this is a tutorial. Because if I create a file and then create a table in it and then try to create that table again, it's going to trigger an error. So in this case, every single time this program runs, it's just going to have a temporary holding space in memory where it's executed. And then when Whenever the program that I'm creating here dies or ends, it's going to delete that information. So that's why I'm using this memory qualifier. Then to query the database, I'm call creating another variable called query QURS. You use something called a cursor inside of SQLite, but basically what this allows you to do, quite simply, is just perform queries on a database. And if you don't know what a query is, that is how you talk to a database. You do so with a language called SQL. Well, since the last line down here is demanding that I create a main file, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put the qualifier pass in here just so that I have something in that function. Then I'm going to create a function that is going to actually create my table for me. And I'm going to call it create table. Again, there's no meaning to these names of these functions. I'm just making it up. And what this is going to do is it's going to call the execute method in SQL Lite that will submit a create table SQL query. And again, I'm going to reference the thing that we called a cursor before. That's something that is a name that is specific to SQLite. And here I'm going to create a multi-line statement here. And this is SQL. So I'm going to make it simpler. I'm going to put it everything in capital letters that makes up the SQL language. And this is going to create a table called customers. And here I'm going to define all of the information that I want to contain inside of this table. So I'm going to want a unique user ID and how I'm going and I'm going to call that ID. Then you have to define whether you want it to be an integer, which is just a single digit with no decimal places, a real, which is just like a float, like we've talked about previously inside of Python, meaning there are decimal places, or text, which means exactly what it is, text, or null. And that is pretty much, for the most part, all-inclusive of all the different variable types you can use inside of SQLite's database. I'm going to call this a primary key. And what this is going to do for me is every single time I create a new customer in this table, customers, it's going to automatically generate a unique number for me. And you're going to see examples here as we go on. I'm going to call another one name, and it's going to be of type text. Street, again, of type text. And it makes it a lot easier. You can leave these things uh, lowercase, but it makes your life a lot easier later on if you make them uppercase. State, text, and balance, which is going to actually be balance due, which is going to be a real or a float in this circumstance. And I'm going to close that SQL command off and finish with the three quotes. So this guy right here is an actual SQL command a statement. That's what we got right there. And that's how you create a table inside of SQLite. And just remember, I'm going to show you an example here in a second, but whenever you do enter new customers into this table, you do not need to enter an ID number. Actually, you shouldn't because this is going to auto-increment for you and create a new unique number every single time. Talking about adding a new customer, now I'm going to create the function that's going to do that. I'm going to call it add customer. And I'm just going to take in a name, street, city, state, and balance. See, don't need the ID. 
and I'm going to issue another query, and this is how you do it. Just reference the query that you created up here, followed by the execute method. And this time I'm going to insert these values here that are sent to me into the table that we created right here in this function. I'm going to do a multi-line statement again. Insert into customers, name, street, city, state, balance. Jump down here, and then this is a little bit weird. Values. If you don't know SQL, I mean, I, I, if you, I already did an SQL tutorial, and I'll provide a link to it here on the screen. It's specific to MySQL, but it's it in essence is identical. The SQL language in MySQL and in SQL Lite. Here, what you're going to do are put in question marks for each of the number of values that you're going to put into this table. So there's five here, so I'm going to put one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to separate them with commas. And then I'm going to close off this multi-line statement. I follow that by a comma. And then the variable that is passed. So I'm going to take these guys right here, and I'm going to put their names in here. And they're automatically going to be transposed everywhere there is a question mark. So to save time, I'm just going to go up here, copy this, paste it in. And close that off. Now I'm going to jump into main and I'm going to call these methods and have them do some things. First I'm going to call the create table method just like that and it's going to create my table for me. Then I'm going to add four customers to my database being myself and let's say I have unpaid debt of $150.76 just to be crazy. And to make it simple I'm going to put three more calls in there just like that. Okay. Just did the same thing over and over again. This is going to send up all this information into the add customer area, and it's going to insert these new customers in their street, city, state, and the balances that they have due currently. With this command, which is a reference to the database, the object that I created, I'm going to call the commit function. And what this does is it forces the database to make all the changes that I have just asked of it, just in case it didn't. And here I'm going to call the select command. Again, if you know SQL, you know it well and what it does. Basically all it's saying is it wants you to return all of the values, that's what star is a reference to, from the table customers. That's all that means. SQL is very, very simple to learn if you don't know it. If I get enough requests, eventually I'm going to redo my SQL and PHP tutorials. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle through the results. This variable right here, query cursor, is going to now have the value of whatever this SQL statement is asking for. So I'm going to cycle through the tuple and print the entries to the screen in ways that I've already done in previous tutorials. And just to keep this neat, I'm going to put a new line in here. And if I didn't have this for statement, what it would do is it would print out the tuple directly onto the screen like, like a tuple looks with brackets and then all the individual entries separated by commas. I don't want that. I want the actual values all separated and put on separate lines. So that's why I'm making this reference right here. And if I run this, you can see that it went and it printed out all of the different values for all the different customers in order for me here on the screen. There's all four customers that I put in there. But you could also come in here and do different other types of queries. Like let's say I want to select all of the customers and I want to order them by balance, meaning from the, per the customer with the lowest balance to the highest balance. And on top of that, let's also say that I would like to be able to print out a label next to all these. So there'll be ID, name, street, city, and so forth. Well, what I'm going to do to do that, this is me just kind of thinking out of my head, I'm going to create a list here that's going to have all of these labels, and then I'm going to cycle through them. Okay, so this is just simply a list that contains labels for all of the information I'm going to print out here on the screen. And I'm going to set this junk variable to zero. And then I'm going to leave this, for the most part, widely unchanged. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print to screen my titles, or my labels. I called them titles in this. And then have it actually print the value out like we did previously. And then at the end, it's probably a neater way of doing this, I'm just not thinking. But either way, this is going to help facilitate cycling through those indexes for those labels, and then resetting them to zero afterwards. And finally, I should also always close this connection at the end. Otherwise, it would normally, if this was a file up here, instead of a being residing in memory in a junk area, this may reside in memory without closing off the database at the end. And if I run this, you can see now that I got exactly what I got, I wanted here. I have name, Paul Smith, and so forth and so on. Everything has its own label. And if I wanted these labels to be on the same line, which I do, I should come in here and put a comma in there. And you can see now that I cycle through it, it's all going to work exactly the way I want it to.
But you could also do a lot of other tricky things, and I'm just going to sort of do this and show it to you on screen. And then if I get enough requests in the comments section, I might do a little bit more in regards to SQL inside of Python. Like for example, here I put in a few additional columns, and I can actually get rid of this because I already created another select instance. Here what I'm doing is using the alter table to add a new column to my customer table, and it's called email, and this should actually be uppercase, text. So that is how you would create a new column or a new entry inside of your table, just simply by calling alter table and the name of the table, the keywords add column, followed by the name of the column you want to create and what variable type it is inside of SQL. I could then, since I added this email value to the customer table, come in here and make changes. This is also the way that you make changes inside of SQL with SQL Lite is with the update command. So I'm saying update table set value of email to this where the ID is equal to one. And you can see that right there. ID is equal to one. And if you look over here, you can see that my email address is now in there. However, there's no email address for the other objects. If I come down here and change this to six, you can now see that email is printing here next to the email address. And if you want to delete uh, specific customer information, you would just call for something like the unique ID and just say delete from table customers where ID is equal to four. So that's how you would delete something from a column. And if you wanted to change something like you wanted the customers to be printed out the screen in, with the balance in descending order, which would mean that the highest balance would pr be printed first. This is exactly how you do that. And if you wanted to limit the results to just two, you just follow any of the variable types inside of the customer table with the word limit followed by the number of maximum results you wanted printed to the screen. And finally, if you would want to skip the first result, you would use the keyword offset followed by the number one, as you have right there. So that's just a quick run through of some of the ways of implementing and using the SQL Lite module inside of Python and some little tricks and ways to interact with it using SQL. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. All the code is freely available on my website, newthinktank.com. Till next time.